Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 13th and the 20th of April 2019. Here is the place where I talk about celestial transits that affect us all, all zodiac signs. So what do we have in this week? Skies. Uh, in this week's skies, we have a few things happening. We have the sun at the end of the week ingressing into the sign of Taurus. Happy birthday, all you Tauruses. You're coming into the favorite year, uh, time of the year for me. I wonder why. I'm on the last day of Taurus, just before Gemini. So when the sun ingresses into the sign of Taurus for a month, our life's zest, our connection to the material plane, to whatever there is, to matter, to the five senses, to what we can feel and touch and taste and smell and hear. And of course, everything that is sensual, that hunger for life grows deeper and more immediate. In a way, the value of satisfaction in our life increases. We want greater harmony, tranquility, satisfaction, and comfort in this plane at this time. So it's a time that we could actually enjoy ourselves very much. We could eat and drink and smell this world. Hopefully do it. Uh, Georgia, right, you know, that isn't always a pleasant experience. You're so right. Yeah, yeah, smelling the world isn't always a pleasant experience. But... As spring is in the air, everywhere I look around, it could be beautiful with all these bloomings going on, at least at the northern part of this globe, the northern hemisphere of this globe. That's one thing that is happening on April 20th, the end of next week. And the other thing that is happening is that Venus, the planet of relationships and satisfaction, is moving into the sign of Aries. When Venus is in Aries, she wants it and she wants it now. There's not much tolerance for um, postponing immediate satisfaction. We could be very individualistic. We don't, we don't feel that we need anybody for that satisfaction. And if we do, we go for it. We become more uh, um, enthusiastic, more passionate, and much more um, entrepreneuring with the way we connect with people and that we create relationships in our life or value in our life. We could actually find new ways to bring in money to our lives or bring in new people into our lives. It is about bringing in the new, stepping off the beaten path to a new road, a more individual, authentic road and, and struggling to make it more harmonious. If Aries and Mars are about struggling, are about the effort that one needs to take a part in in order for something to sprout in this universe, in order for something to have a chance to actually grow and mature and become, there's effort, there's energy that needs to be put in uh, before that could even happen. So, putting more effort, more energy in our own satisfaction and value in our lives. That's two things that are happening. Other than that, the day before that, on April 19th, we are at the full moon at the 29th degrees of Libra. Native Americans have been calling this the pink moon because of the pink moss that, have been, that has been growing throughout the land at this time, or the fish moon because the fish were plentiful, and, and there's many other depictions um, basically, this is a very fruitful moon. This is a moon that can bring a lot of growth that will end up in, in bearing gifts from within us to people around us. This is also a time that we could feel that the shift that has been taking place for the last two weeks from that new moon that was squaring uh, Saturn and Pluto, we are getting to a full moon, exactly 180 degrees from the past place it was standing in, almost, you know, this time squaring Saturn and Pluto from the other side. 
So we still have that energy of Saturn and Pluto squaring the Moon Sun uh, um, energy that is going on throughout this time. Since this is in Libra, we could see a difference that has been done in relationships in our lives in the past two weeks from that new moon until now. And it is also a time that we could have changed, we could have reflected, we could have seen the other side of the coin or, or the other side's uh, uh, point of view, so to speak. And if we've done work throughout these two weeks, we can actually go on a different path, uh, see it differently, and therefore choose a different road. But if we haven't, this could be just a heightening of what already started, just to make sure that we understand. Um, moons in Libra are always about balancing out between viewpoints, between different aspects, between giving too much and giving too little, between giving my 120% to someone and, and not actually committing to anything. It's about finding this equilibrium that really comes from an understanding that I can do better with someone than I can alone, that one and one are not two, are three. The, 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 the sum is greater from its parts and I could never be everything and everybody. That's why I need you. I need you to complete me. So there's an understanding of the interconnectivity at this time. But again, since we are squaring Saturn and Pluto, this is a time that we are faced with the same kind of limits and borders that have stopped us, halted us, killed us, and took us off the road before. And now we are demanded to face them maturely and responsibly and actually transcend them and grow stronger and different. Saturn, Pluto. Um, Mercury, two days before that, on April 17th, is going to enter the sign of Aries. Our mind, our thoughts, and our working through our close environment, through our extended family and neighbors and, and, and locality, is much more individualistic, hasteful, and passionate at this time. It could be a little bit too um, heated, you know, and... and, and the male energies there could could make us say things too harshly or or be too confrontational and that's something we would have to watch out from but other than that this is a great time to walk forward and understand that really you are the navigator of your life and if you're not going to make the necessary steps no one is going to make them for you god damn it <laughs> i guess that hit a spot right in there <laughs> Right, Georgia? Is that something we're working on for the past week or so? Anyway, so that's the big things that are happening in the sky. But other than that, there's some more things happening. Remember that the 13th Saturday, we have the Sun Square Pluto, transformative time, a time that you could feel the pain deeper, a time that you can feel the darkness dancing with you a little closer than usual but it's for a good reason it's for you to take it back into the light to actually make those undercurrents something you could harness somehow not something that pulls you away from your focus and anchor so uh, saturday be watchful of too much drama and not enough patience and tolerance Sunday, great energetic day to move things forward, to actually expand your horizon. It's a lucky time, Sunday, Monday, lucky time. It ta I mean, I mean, if 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 if, uh, if you do it usually, then go fill up the lottery. Or if you want to ask for a promotion, maybe that's a good day for you. You have to see how that works with your own personal chart before you do that. But generally speaking, it's a very lucky time, and it's an energetical time. It's a popular time. It's a time that we could work with people together to actually progress things. Uh, there's a trine between the Sun and Jupiter, and then a day later the Moon joins in and there's a grand mystic trine between those three bodies in the sky. It's a very lucky time. It's a time that we could feel providence and, 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 and uh, affluence and, and abundance are coming back into our life. We need to work with these energies on the one hand, but do not expect them 
to be there for you. Do not take them for granted. Do not rely on them as you think about your expansion. No, the law of Mars is if you don't move your butt and really make an effort, no one promises it's ever going to manifest. And same goes for here. If you're too extravagant, if you're indiscreet, if you're not responsible enough, if you're not sustainable in the way that you're planning things, and you take too much upon your shoulders thinking that you're omnipotent, this isn't going to be a lucky thing for you. This is going to bring you down into a burnout syndrome because you put too much on your shoulders. So just watch for that. Other than that, there's a sextile to Mars on that day as well, if there wasn't enough energy in the sky as it is. And on Monday as well, the, um, Venus, the planet of satisfaction, is sextiling Pluto. This is a great time for intimacy and sex and actually taking new relationships to a deeper level or a more understanding level of any relationship you have. Just watch out. Do not be too intense, especially with new relationships. Do not be too intense this uh, week and on Monday especially. Um, there's also a trine to Uranus at this time, a little later on Monday. And then Tuesday, Venus is squaring, uh, is squaring Jupiter. It's a time that we could really enjoy ourselves in relationships. We could actually meet new people. We could uh, find new ways to bring in value and money into our lives, both with that and Venus coming into Aries. But... Um, we could be too open, too extravagant, and too happy-go-lucky about things. Don't. Um, moon is going to square Mars on that day as well. Watch out for aggression. Nighttime of Tuesday is calm. I'm talking about Central European time. So if you're in the States, you take it a few hours before. If you're in the Pacific, take it a few hours ahead. Um, Wednesday. Wednesday is a sensitive day. It's also a day that uh, Mercury is moving into Aries. Um, our, we could have mood swings on Wednesday, so watch out for it. And if you're looking for strength, look inside. Inner strength is the theme for Wednesday the 17th. 18th, generally a good day for uh, anything physical and romantic. Just at the night time, do not be too harsh of a judge and loosen up those anal muscles for me. I'm sorry, I didn't really say that. You didn't really hear that. It's all in your mind. Georgia, you're very rude this time. Okay, the 19th Friday, that's the new moon, folks. Uh, new moon, that's the full moon, folks. And Mercury is going to conjunct Chiron at this time. This is a wonderful time to talk about things that are actually painful, to think about things and articulate things that have been painful for a while. Just be careful. Do not create new pains for yourself or other people around you at this time because there is sensitivity there. We've talked about this full moon already. I'm not going to repeat that. On Saturday the 20th, Sun conjunct Hygieia, the goddess of hygiene and health. This is a time to fix all those bad habits. You need to stop smoking. You need to stop drinking. You need to eat healthier food. You need to go to sleep at a different hour or stop uh, with those um, um, habits that you have. I don't know what it is in your life that you need to change. But this is definitely the time to take care of your health in any kind of level, emotional, spiritual, mental, and physical. Or else, <laughs> because when uh, Sun conjunct idea, you know, these health matters, these matters of hygiene could come up to the surface if uh, they're not handled and neglected. Other than that, on that day, Sun ingresses into Taurus and Venus into Aries. And we talked about that at the beginning of the video. I want to thank you for listening and I want to thank you for sharing. On behalf of Georgia and myself, we wish you a very happy, long life. May, you, may we all live long and prosper. Amen.